Come check out some really fresh new models from CreatureCaster.com. Spiky bits. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear checking in, showcasing some new models from CreatureCaster. Those are those fantastic, nice upstairs neighbors up in Canada lands. They got some really great alternate models on sale today actually i think I, I think they're on pre-order um at least in in june here now these are tree peoples uh they're specifically two different types of tree walkers they have the boreal tree walker which is the ginormous one in this bag right here which i'm about to show you and a female tree walker which is a bit smaller but still pretty detailed this one has two different uh kind of arm weapon options this one only has one particular pose, but they're they're both very dynamic and very cool looking. And um, I, I think if you're looking for some sort of alternate model for your Tree People Army, AKA Sylvanath, these Tree Walkers are really gonna fill that gap for you. So let's take a look at the parts themselves here. Now, of course, if you're familiar with Creature Caster by this point, they had a Kickstarter, uh, a few years ago and I think they got everything filled and out and now they're on to making uh, new miniatures new for their range here you know they got their, that really dope resin really good quality stuff here very very well detailed obviously well sculpted they have some fantastic sculptors that go way back in this industry not just on this particular product here so really cool stuff there now you can see here that well there's lots of wood grain detail here <laughs> very well do very well detailed piece here in fact <laughs> that we just happened to grab on accident or not accident depending on how you look at it which is the, the one on top there a couple of different leg options it looks like right here and some arms and things so very cool styling to the wood and everything like that definitely comes across as what it's supposed to be here's the face right here which is <laughs> as you can tell very well done now this is a this is a larger model I don't know exactly how big this one is I don't think this one is actually sold separately they're doing a bundle deal right now so I can't exactly tell you how tall it is but we're about to find out because I'm gonna put these together uh, here in a minute and show you and compare it to some of the Sylvanas stuff that's out there so or Sylvanith rather Sylvanith obviously a completely different thing so there's that and of course it comes with their own base right here which you can of course put on a uh, slot or excuse me a uh, one of those beveled bases depending on how you know big you're trying to make this base whether it's you know 40 60 65 80 I suppose you could put it on 100 but that seems kind of silly so let's take a look at the Boreal tree walker this is the female one first out of the shoot all right, so here's the Boreal one. Now this one is listed separately on their site. You can pick it up. I think it's $110 Canadian, but at that point you might as well just scoop up the bundle if it's still available, because that is 140 Canadian. And I feel like 140 Canadian for these two models, uh, for what they are, is a pretty good value in and of itself. Now let's, I'm not gonna be able to look at all these pieces because, well, a lot of space here. Okay, what do we got? I don't know. Looks like that piece snapped off. That's unfortunate. Oh, well, I think it might be two different varieties. Okay, let's see. So you can tell they come in a nice bubble bag, which should, in theory, protect it pretty well. Here's the front of the Boreal Tree Walker. You can see it's kind of got that whole bearded kind of uh, look to it, obviously. Playing on some Tolkien strings right there, but very cool looking, highly detailed, of course. All that dope wood detail there. Now, all of their models slot in very well just like they're supposed to be obviously they're using computers I can't tell you how that all works I'm not a computer wizard but I know that uh, well it's getting better and better and Forge World seems to be adopting some of that too which is cool to see here's some more parts uh, these look to be legs maybe I don't know quite yet I don't have haven't I haven't checked out the breakdown in front of me but yeah these definitely look like oh they have okay they have those on the bottom because they're gonna slot into these spaces on the base here, which is about the same size, uh, maybe a little bit bigger than the tree lady right there. So there's the two legs. Now, they have some hanging heads that I think go off the staff here that you can see looks like some crazy demon skull things for their other line and there's some normal size skulls in there that are all sculpted hanging from these sacks. And it looks like this noose piece might have snapped off which will kind of suck because I really couldn't see you getting that glued back on unfortunately well maybe it looks like there's some strength there 
It's going to be hard to say. I'm not going to mess around with that. But I'm going to check the instructions to see if you need both of these. Because it's obviously optional. You can hang them off the, the posts on the staff. And this staff is ginormous. I mean, it takes up the whole camera. Camera view there, it's obviously bigger than my hand. So we're talking ginormous, if you know what I mean right there. Now, it's got all sorts of more skulls and things. So these are entirely optional in and of itself. But you can, you know, have them dangling about in different places or kind of rig it up so it's uh you know it's a little bit supported better with that separation there so that is one way to assemble him let's see what's the other way i think it's staff and punch is it staff and punch let me look on their site real quick yeah it's staff and punch so here's the other blade this is the blade that goes in the other hand here which i'm sure are these appendages these look to be them yep and the socket in here and then at the end you put the weapons, which would be this and this. Yep, that looks to be about right. So you can tell this is a really big model. Uh, these are the hands that are the other alternate uh, ends to the arms there. Super, super creepy wooded hands, but man, these things are very cool looking. If you have these left over, of course, I'm sure you could find some sort of crazy use for them. Just mount them up, make them their own figure. That thing would easily fit on a 40 mil base right there. Holy cow. Okay, so there's the arms. So I think what I'm gonna do is clip all this stuff down and try gluing it together real quick just to give you guys a good sense of scale and how they match up to some of the existing tree peoples out there on the Warham side. So we're back and we got all these models put together. So here is the tree lady or tree woman. I didn't glue down her head just because I figured it'd be easier to paint uh, if it was separate. And there's all these pieces back here that all glue in separately. Now let's zoom in a little bit on this just to give you an idea of the detail. Now there is a tremendous amount of detail here. You can still see there are some mold lines that need to get shaved. I just wanted to get it assembled. And remember, you always need to wash your resin miniatures in hot soapy water. Now there is some joints that are gonna need to be filled here. I recommend Vallejo Plastic Putty for that. They sell it in a tube. Here's some of it. Oh no, where'd it go? <laughs> Here's some of it right here. Give you an idea. This stuff's great, it dries super hard, super rock hard. It's everything green, liquid green stuff wishes it was. And then you can get in there and scrape the excess away on all of the uh, joints here that are appearing. Uh, it's not. I don't want to say this is this was a bad cast, but when you're working with resin miniatures, sometimes you just are going to get those cat those gaps. That's just the that's just the nature of the beast right there. So not a real big deal to be quite honest. Uh, everything seemed to go together well. Everything's obviously well detailed. She fits right into her base right here, and looks to be I would say that's um I mean that is definitely probably about six seven inches tall right there. It's going to be a little bit smaller than the tree lord that you're about to see here in a second. So let me grab him. So here's the Borealis Tree Lord, and you can tell he is a mighty beast right there. But I guess, you know, if you think about it, he's probably like the uh, the, the male version of uh, the tree folk. So I would imagine they would be uh, bigger, right? I guess I guess that makes sense. I glued on his, uh, just his regular grabby hands right there, which are quite large in and of themselves. You can see everything goes together pretty well. Now, snapping him into the base, it's, he doesn't slot in so he stands freely, but once you get him glued in there, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, I was having, I had to just kind of, yep, there it goes. So there he locks in, but he would have to be glued down to kind of lock him in place there. But you can tell he's definitely very well detailed. Let's zoom out a little bit just to give you a better idea of scale here. So there's the Borealis Tree Lord. Here is uh, the female tree woman. Give you an idea exactly how big those are right there. So this one's clocking in. I think the official site said 7.8 inches on this one right here, or 7.5. So this one's probably a little bit smaller, maybe around the six to 6.5, give or take there. Now, when we compare it to some of the Games Workshop stuff out there, like the Sylvaneth, here's the Tree Lord Ancient, just to give you an idea. He's a little bit smaller than the tree woman and definitely noticeably smaller than the tree lord. And then here's uh, another tree woman, a Drakia, right there, the new Drakia. 
and you can see she is probably right up to the hips on the tree woman right here. So maybe not a good substitute for Drakia if that's your thing, but you know, you definitely could use it as a tree lord ancient. Uh, maybe just about on par right there. And for the Borealis Tree Lord, it's probably gonna be a little bit bigger. But honestly, in Age of Sigmar, it doesn't it doesn't really matter about size because remember in match play when you're putting monsters in cover you're not getting a plus one anyway so it doesn't super matter right there so kind of just go you know vote where you hobby dollars don't let anybody tell you how to hobby or how you should hobby oh and here's the alternate staff too you can kind of get an idea exactly how big that one is uh, right there once you once you get that locked in i don't know exactly i guess it would be something like something like that right there would be the pose once you get it on there this is a huge chunk of resin so very cool stuff there like i said creaturecaster.com some pretty dope tree folk miniatures here the combo or the bundle is on sale for 140 canadian through june and i think they're only doing a limited pre-order of 100 on that one you can't get her separate the borealis or boreal tree lord with the two extra alternate arms I think it is 110 Canadian right there. So obviously, you might as well just get the bundle at that point. And of course, they come with their dope bases, which I don't have glued on here just because, <laughs> and I don't have her head glued on either, just in case we want to go back and do a little bit more work and do some painting on that. But you get how it all goes together, obviously, very well. I mean, I didn't even do any hobbying on that right there and it locked right in. So there is a little bit of work. Some of these joints, you will have to use the plastic putty, like I said. This is literally all of the tools I use, an X-Acto blade, clippers, and a seam scraper to get it all together to this point right here. So that's about it for this one. Like I said, make sure you check out <laughs> creaturecaster.com. They have that deal going on right now. Now, if you like our features here and all the cool dope unboxings and video tutorials and 8th edition Warhammer 40k features that we've been bringing you, make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so you can be the very first to comment and like our videos, and head on over to longwar.net, that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today.